So we continue with the series on the resurrection of the dead and um, we have dealt with previous in previous teachings on this topic we've dealt with the second coming of Jesus Christ our Lord, the events leading up to the second coming and we've looked at the, the first resurrection and in this teaching today we want to look at the second resurrection. Now the Bible doesn't ever mention a second resurrection. What it does mention is a first resurrection. And we know that the first resurrection involves the resurrection of the saints. We also know that there is a subsequent resurrection, which is the resurrection of the unbelievers. And so we refer to that resurrection as the second resurrection. Um, but in order to get to that uh, particular resurrection, which is the resurrection of the unbelievers, there is again a sequence of events that must take place uh, as revealed to us in Scripture leading up to that particular resurrection. And uh, we've alluded to some of the events already in, in previous teachings, but uh, today we want to cover just what those events actually are. Um, and so we, one of the things that takes place, we've looked at in the first resurrection, we saw that when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth, that there is the resurrection of the saints that takes place. And we can go back and look at that particular teaching to get the detail of that. But then at that time, our Lord comes back to the earth because we ascend into uh, the air and we meet the Lord in the clouds in the air and we are judged as saints. And then we return to the earth. While we're being judged, the wrath of God is being poured out on the earth. And then the saints will return to the earth with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will set up his millennial reign on the earth at that time. Now, when the, the wrath of God is poured out on the earth over that three-year period that we spoke about earlier, um, uh, at least one-third of mankind on, living on the earth at that time will be killed during that period of time. Uh, the, the Bible talks about the one plague of the 200 million horsemen um, whom God uses, and obviously there are angelic horsemen that God uses to kill a third of mankind. But during the outpouring of wrath, God's wrath over that three-year period, there are other uh, a, a number of other people who are killed as well. The Bible talks about the fact that um, when the um, the stalk, I think it's called wormwood, uh, comes and, and hits the earth, that the waters are made bitter and uh, many people die because of the, the bitterness of the water. And so there's, there's going to be a, a, a huge number of people that will actually uh, be killed during the outpouring of God, God's wrath on the earth during that three-year period. However, it is estimated there will be roughly about six billion people still alive on the earth when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. And um, when our Lord returns to the earth, there's going to be one um, major event that, that, that um, takes place on the earth at our Lord Jesus Christ's return, and that is the Battle of Armageddon. The, um, our Lord's millennial reign will open up with a, a battle, and that battle is referred to as the Battle of Armageddon in Scripture. And so let's have a look at what uh, the Scripture uh, says about that particular event, the Battle of Armageddon, and uh, we'll make some comments as we go through what the Scripture says about this event. Uh, the first Scripture we'll look at is in Zechariah chapter 14, beginning at verse 3. And I just want to again emphasize that this teaching is not a detailed teaching on the end times. This teaching is uh, falls under the umbrella of uh, the topic of the resurrection of the dead, being one of the foundation principles of the doctrine of Christ. And so this teaching is, is looking at highlighted uh, points within uh, the calendar leading up to the various resurrections. We've looked at the first resurrection and the events leading up to there. We're now looking at the second resurrection and the events leading up to that event. And so the first event, as I I've mentioned, is now the Battle of Armageddon that will take place when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. And so the scripture is in Zechariah chapter 14, beginning at verse 3. Scripture says, Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two, from east to west, making a very large valley. 
Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Verse 12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule, on the camel and the donkey, and on the, all the cattle that will be in the camps, so shall this plague be. And so we can see a, a few things about, because this, this particular um, um, account given to us in Scripture is describing the battle of Armageddon um, that will take place when our Lord returns. Notice that our Lord will return to the Mount of Olives, that is the same mount uh, that the disciples saw him ascend from when they were in the book of Acts and they, our Lord was taken up into the clouds and they were gazing into heaven and the two angels appeared and said the same Jesus who you saw ascend will return in, in the same manner and so our Lord Jesus Christ will come to exactly that same spot the um, Mount of Olives when our Lord does come to the Mount of Olives the Bible talks about a, a split that will take place and obviously that's an earthquake um, so there'll be a tremendous earthquake that'll take place at that time and the, the mountain will be split in, in two um, <clears throat> and then this particular battle will take place but I mean the, the battle is is pretty one-sided because as you can see um, the Bible talks about the fact that our Lord will destroy um, uh, the Antichrist and his armies with the breath of his mouth and the result is that their, their flesh, the Bible says, shall dissolve while they stand on their feet, and their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongue shall dissolve in their mouths. And so it, it is a very one-sided battle that does take place. Nevertheless, uh, it is a battle. But also something else that's quite interesting about this passage of Scripture, he talks about the fact that... Um, In verse 12, and this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. And you will recall in the earlier teaching that we did at the when the Antichrist comes on the scene that his armies invade Israel and they take over Jerusalem. And again in, in verse 3 of this passage of scripture, then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. The, those nations that uh, this uh, passage of Scripture is referring to, if you read the, the previous verses of Scripture, refers to the, the nations around Israel that invaded Israel at the time of the Antichrist. And so they are the nations that will be assembled together with the Antichrist at the Battle of Armageddon. Because, as we've said before, that uh, the Antichrist will rule over the Fourth Kingdom. And it is the Fourth Kingdom that will assemble to... Um, do warfare against the Lord and His army when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. But also we can have a look at what kind of a warfare will take place because there's not going to be any modern weaponry and no planes and no nuclear weapons or anything like that at that particular time because during the time that God the Father pours out His wrath on the earth all infrastructure will be completely done away with. Satellites will be done away with. Um, there will be absolutely nothing that will resemble the earth as we know it today. It will be completely transformed when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. So much so that in verse 15 of this passage of Scripture, the Scripture says, Such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule and the camel and the donkey and all the cattle that will be in those camps so shall this plague be. And so the army that will be portrayed against the Lord and His army when our Lord returns to the earth with the saints is an army that is pretty much similar to the kind of armies that existed in our Lord's day, the Roman army, for argument's sake. And so they, they were on horses and camels and donkeys and they had cattle with them. There was no, there's no mention of any modern uh, machinery at all because there won't be anything like that available to the earth at that time. Let's have a look at another scripture uh, that also describes this particular event. 
Uh, and this is where we actually get the, the, the name Armageddon when we deal with this particular battle that will take place. In Revelation chapter 16, beginning at verse 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, which is Satan, out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Verse 16. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. And so what happens is the, the wrath of God has uh, been poured out on the earth and multitudes have been uh, killed during that period of time. And obviously the whole of mankind has gone through complete a miserable state over that three-year period, and infrastructure has completely been destroyed. Satan knows that he, what is uh, about to take place, and so uh, he sends out demons into the earth to, in, uh, to gather the fourth kingdom and assemble them to this place called Armageddon uh, because he knows that the Lord is about to appear with his saints. And so he is going to now uh, try to prevent the Lord from reigning on the earth. And so the Antichrist and the false prophet plus uh, all of their army will then uh, join up and they will be waiting for the Lord at this place called Armageddon. And our Lord Jesus Christ will then uh, return uh, to the Mount of Olives. And um, that's when this battle will take place. Another scripture we can see uh, which gives us a bit more insight with regards to this particular battle as it, as it unfolds is in Revelations chapter 19, beginning at verse 11. Now this is now what takes place on the other side of the coin. This is when our Lord Jesus uh, and his armies uh, descend out of heaven. Uh, the scripture says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. <coughs> Speaking of Jesus our Lord. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and, the flesh, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, small, and great. And I saw the beast, talking about the Antichrist, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who, de who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. And so here again is just now uh, another picture of the same event taking place. And you see these two armies uh, facing each other. And these two armies are, as I say, on, on horseback. There's no modern weaponry at all. And... Uh, we, we see, we saw in Zechariah's account when our Lord does smite them with the sword of his mouth that the result is, is that their, their flesh literally dissolves while they stand before the Lord and uh, they are, are destroyed there and then. And that is the whole of the fourth kingdom because they are the ones who have received the mark of the beast during his reign on the earth. And that the false prophet and um, the antichrist are then taken and they're bound and they are cast into the lake of fire and brimstone at that particular time. Uh, they're the first two to be cast alive into the lake of fire and brimstone. The scripture also tells us about the fact that uh, Satan and his angels will at that time be bound. An angel will come down uh, with a great chain in his hand. He will bind Satan for a, uh, a thousand years and they will be cast into the bottomless pit and they will be removed from the earth for a thousand year period. 
And so that is the, the start of our Lord Jesus Christ's reign on the earth. He comes down to the earth with his armies. And we are obviously the army of the, of the, the Lord when, when he comes to the earth. But there's no fighting done on our part. We will just stand there on, our, on, on white horses and we will um, observe what our Lord actually does to uh, Satan and his army and destroys them by this method. Um, and then we see that the, the millennial reign of the Antichrist will begin. For 1,000 years, our Lord will then begin to rule on the earth. Satan and his angels would have been removed. The fourth kingdom would have been destroyed. But the other three kingdoms will still be on the earth. And those other three kingdoms are all unbelievers. Uh, they are all people who would have rejected the gospel. Um, and they would all still be carnal uh, unbelievers. They, 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 carnal nature would not have changed at all. Satan and his influence would have been removed from the earth. So his deceiving uh, power that he has over the nations of the earth today will be removed from the earth and he will no longer be able to deceive those nations who are on the earth. They will be exposed only to the truth during the time that Jesus Christ reigns on the earth. And let's have a look now at some scripture that deals with the millennial reign on the earth because that is what... So the, the, the church will be taken out of the earth. Um, the tribulation takes... Just a brief history again. The tribulation takes place for that three and a half year period. End of the tribulation, the church is taken out of the earth. Only the saints are taken out of the earth for that three year period and they are judged while they're out of the earth. In that three-year period, the wrath of God is poured out on the earth. At the end of that three-year period, our Lord Jesus returns to the earth with his saints. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet gather the armies of the fourth kingdom together to this uh, location called Armageddon um, to do battle against the Lord and his army. There is no modern weaponry at all any longer. The infrastructure of the earth is being completely eradicated from that point of view. And so everything is, is reverted back to spears, shields, and swords. That is the, the weaponry available. Uh, the mode of transport that's available is horses and donkeys, and cattle are used uh, to uh, carry um, loads, etc. So everything reverts back to what it used to be like when our Lord was first on the earth, in that there was no modern weaponry back then either. The battle takes place, which is pretty one-sided. Our Lord destroys uh, the Antichrist and his army uh, with the breath of his mouth. The Antichrist and the false prophet are then uh, captured and they're cast alive into the lake of fire and brimstone. Satan and his angels are captured and they're bound up and they uh, are cast into the bottomless pit. And so our Lord is able to now uh, set up his reign on the earth. He sets up his reign from the city of Jerusalem and he reigns through his saints uh, over all the rest of the unbelievers on the earth. And I've already mentioned that it's estimated there will be roughly 6 billion unbelievers living on the earth at that time. And so let's have a look at some scripture to see what the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ will be like. Because we're still leading up to the second resurrection. We haven't yet got to the second resurrection. Um, we're still getting there. Our first scripture we can have a look at is in Isaiah chapter 11 beginning at verse 5. The scripture says, Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. Verse 8, the nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the wean child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people, for the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. And so this picture describes what the earth will be like when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth and sets up his reign on the earth from the city of Jerusalem for that thousand year period. There is absolutely no um, death and destruction at, at all. We have pictures of the, the carnivores will revert to being herbivores during that time. 
we, we have pictures of lions eating straw and you know um, sheep lying down with, with, with leopards and we have pictures of little little toddlers playing with snakes, dangerous vipers and, and cobras and you know the, the cobras playing with them and everything would be reverting back to the way God actually intended nature to, do, to be like in the first place. You recall in the book of Romans the Bible says the whole of creation um, longs for the re revealing of the sons of God that they may be exposed to the liberty of the sons of God. And so the, the, when, when our Lord re reigns on the earth there will be no more uh, death and no more destruction in the earth. There will be absolute peace and harmony in the earth in that even all, the, all of the animals to, today, which is unnatural for carnivores to eat grass for argument's sake, uh, and, not to, and for unnatural for, for dangerous snakes not to bite little toddlers, uh, it will be completely reversed and uh, all animals will be com in complete harmony together and be able to be playful with children. Children will have no in inhibitions playing with dangerous snakes. Parents will have no inhibitions for, for allowing their children to play with uh, dangerous snakes because dangerous snakes will no longer be dangerous. They will be playful. And that is the, the kind of environment that will exist on the earth when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. Uh, another scripture we can have a look at, which uh, will give us another indication of what our Lord's millennial reign will be like, Zechariah chapter 14, beginning at verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came up against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. When our Lord returns to the earth at this time, um, well, let's go back to the Old Covenant. Under the Old Covenant, they had all of the, the Sabbaths were put in place, the new moons were put in place, and the, the, the different feasts were put in place. All of those um, calendar events were types and shadows of the real thing that is still to come. And the real thing that is still to come will come when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. Under the present uh, covenant that we are under, the new covenant, we worship God in spirit and in truth. And so we do not observe Sabbaths and new moons and uh, fest, uh, different feasts throughout the year as the Jews do under the Old Covenant because that is the types and shadows that they still serve. Under the New Covenant, we do not serve types and shadows. Uh, this covenant, we worship God in the spirit for God is spirit and he seeks those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth for those are the worshipers that God is seeking for at this time. However, when our Lord Jesus Christ does return to the earth, he will institute the true feasts and we will, the, the church of our Lord will then worship God uh, observing the Sabbaths, the new moons and the, the feasts as they always were intended by God. Um, it's going to be nothing like what is currently, what was, or what was experienced under the Old Covenant and even now is being experienced by the Jewish uh, nation under, because they're still under that covenant. It's because all of that is types and shadows. It's not the real thing. When our Lord returns to the earth, we will experience the real thing in worshiping God during those periods and obviously at other times as well. But there will be, and we'll be reigning over the unbelieving nations who are on the earth. But there is, as we've read in this passage of scripture, there is one particular feast that all the unbelieving nations will be required to observe when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth. They will not be required to observe the Sabbath, the new moons, and the rest of the feast. Um, but this is one particular feast that they will be required to observe. And those nations will have to come up to the city of Jerusalem once a year at the Feast of Tabernacles and worship before the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the scripture talks about the fact that those who choose not to come up to worship the Lord at the Feast of Tabernacles will incur um, 
the appropriate punishment. And the punishment will be that there will be no rain on that particular nation for the following year. And that's the kind of punishment, because remember, we spoke about the fact that uh, we will, with our Lord Jesus, rule over them with a rod of iron. They, although they will be living within a, a perfect environment, um, not... Um, um, not sub, sub, subjected to any kind of deception from Satan and his angels. Um, they are still carnal in nature. And so they will not always enjoy having the saints ruling over them because their carnal nature is still going to be there and their rebellious nature will still be in place. The Lord would not have put this particular passage of Scripture in place if it was impossible for the nations of the world to not uh, disobey this particular command. Um, obviously it is possible which is why the Lord says this is the punishment that that nation will incur and so we see that the unbelieving nations of the earth during the millennial reign of the earth for that whole thousand years every year will be required to come up to the city of Jerusalem and worship during the time of the Feast of Tabernacles but that's just giving us an indication as to what will transpire the fact that there will be unbelieving nations still on the earth and this is a uh, part of the, the, the law that they will be required to keep under the reign of the uh, saints on the earth at that time. And we'll have a look at one more scripture that uh, deals with what our Lord's millennial reign will be like. The scripture is in Revelation chapter 20, beginning at verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. This is talking about the saints. The saints will receive thrones and, and judgment will be committed to them. The thrones by and large will be located in the city of Jerusalem and they will be then, remember we've, we've dealt with in the previous teaching, well done good and faithful servant, you will be over ten cities, you will be over five cities. And so the saints will be given their areas of responsibility to rule over over the, the unbelieving nations of the earth. Uh, then scripture, scripture goes on to say, Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, or had received the mark of, of, on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him 1,000 years. And so for this 1,000 years, we, will, we see that there will be absolute harmony on the earth, um, especially amongst God's creation. There will be no disharmony whatsoever. Um, there will be a, a degree of rebelliousness about the unbelievers, and that is why they will be ruled with a rod of iron. Um, but nevertheless, those who are obedient and do um, you know, come up to, to worship the Lord at the Feast of Tabernacles, they will experience the blessing of God. There's many scriptures that talks about what it will be like on the earth during that time, and there will just be prosperity throughout, and there will be just blessing throughout. But again, the, the picture we see of the world at that time is um, the same kind of infrastructure as it was in place when our Lord was on the earth the very first time. There's no development that takes place from the point of view of we see all of these um, things that we see in the earth today. There will be no factories at that time. There will be no uh, shopping malls. There will be no highways. There will be no vehicles. There will be no planes. It will only be an agricultural society that um, is at peace and at harmony with creation and creation at peace and at harmony with them. And the blessing of God will be uh, abundantly experienced in the earth during that time. At the end of the thousand year reign of Christ Jesus our Lord, now we're talking far down the line, I mean, we're talking at least a thousand years from now, but obviously a lot longer than that. Um, there is another battle that will then take place, because we're still leading up to the second resurrection, we haven't got to the second resurrection yet. Um, so at the end of the thousand year reign of Christ Jesus our Lord, another battle will take place. So our, the, our Lord's 
millennial reign opens up with the Battle of Armageddon, and it will close with the Battle of Gog and Magog, and that's the scriptures we're going to have a look at now. And that's how our Lord's millennial reign draws to a close on the earth. The first scripture we can look at is in Ezekiel chapter 39, beginning at verse 1. Scripture says, And you, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, uh, Meshach, and Tubal. And I will turn you around and lead you on, bringing you up from the far north, and bring you against the mountains of Israel. And then I will knock the bow out of your left hand, and cause the arrows to fall out of your right hand. You shall fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and all your troops and the peoples who are with you. I will give you to the birds of prey of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. You shall fall on an open field, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. And I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in the security in the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And so this is a picture of another battle that takes place. And you know the the book of revelations when we go look at the account in the book of revelations and tie the two together we can understand what battle this particular uh, battle is referring what account in scripture this battle is referring to and that scripture is in revelations chapter 20 beginning at verse 7 the scripture says now when the thousand years have expired this is the millennial reign of our lord jesus satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, speaking of the city of Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so here we have the picture of at the end of the millennial reign of Christ, Satan and his angels will be released out of the bottomless pit. They will go into the earth once again and deceive the nations in the earth once again. These are the unbelieving nations who are dwelling in the earth. There are many other scriptures that deal with this account that talks about the fact that the unbelieving nations, evil thoughts will arise in their minds. And that's how Satan works. He plants thoughts into people's minds and he, he, he is able to deceive them from that point of view. And they will look at the saints in, uh, in, the, in Israel and around the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible talks about these people will be living peacefully in unwalled villages and these uh, unbelieving nations will look at them and they will say to themselves, well, wait a minute, let's go up and let's destroy them. Let's break the, their bondage of yoke over us because they're ruling us with this rod of iron and let us you know, begin to rule ourselves once again and not have these um, people of God ruling over us. And so Satan gathers together a huge army. It's, in fact, the, the, the rest of mankind, kind of, who comes up. The Bible talks about they surround the camp of the saints. They come up as a cloud, the Bible has referred to, on the, on, the, on the earth. It is such a vast army that comes against the saints at the end time and comes against the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who is dwelling with us in the city of Jerusalem. And that is this battle of Gog and Magog. Now, when our Lord came to the earth the first, at the beginning of the millennial reign um, and the battle of Armageddon takes place, our Lord destroys um, the Antichrist and his army with the breath of, breath of his mouth. At this time, when Gog and Magog come up against the saints of the Lord at the end of the thousand-year reign of Christ to destroy them, it is not the Lord Jesus who destroys him with the breath of his mouth. Now fire descends out of heaven from God the Father, and he destroys them, and he completely wipes them out. And that is the end of our Lord Jesus Christ's millennial reign on the earth. It ends with this battle of Magog, this complete rebellion by the, uh, the nations of the world coming against the saints of God in the in, the, in the, the geographic state of Israel and they try to uh, overthrow the Lord's reign and they try to destroy the saints 
and God the Father destroys them in turn. Um, the Bible talks about the fact that when this um, battle, for want of a better word, takes place, um, the, the weaponry that is destroyed, uh, that is left behind, it, it, the, uh, the scriptures talk about shields and spears and swords again, and bows. Um, and the, it talks about the saints. It, it takes the saints seven months to bury everyone who is killed in this particular battle. That's, that's just how many people are, are killed by, by God the Father. And the, the, they collect the weaponry of this huge, vast army. And the Bible talks about the fact that that weaponry is used as firewood for the next seven years. And so that just shows you just how uh, vast this army is that comes against the saints of the Lord at the end time. And also, again, it shows you the kind of weaponry that will be used at that time. Because, you know, it's not a case of burning tanks and burning uh, artillery pieces and all that for the next seven years. It's a case of burning shields and spears and, and swords and clubs and that type of thing for the next seven years will be used as firewood. Because the, the weaponry will be that vast. But God will then destroy uh, Gog and Magog um, at this particular battle. It will be, again, fire from God will come down out of heaven and completely destroy them. At that time, the Bible talks about Satan will then be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. So Satan doesn't get um, judged at that time. Satan has already been judged. The Bible talks about the fact in verse 10 of that scripture in Revelation 20, it says, The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. So the, the beast and the false prophet were already cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death right at the beginning of the thousand-year reign of Christ. At the end of the thousand-year reign of Christ, when this battle takes place, Satan is then cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Now, the reason that he is cast into the lake of fire and brimstone straight away is because he has already been judged. Our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ revealed that to us in the Gospels, that Satan has already been judged. So he doesn't stand for judgment anymore. He just now incurs his penalty, which is to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. But the rest of mankind still has to be judged. And also Satan's angels still have to be judged. And so we now come to the second resurrection that will take place. And the second resurrection takes place at the same time as the uh, judgment of the unbelievers. This is when their day of judgment will come. And uh, let's have a look at some scriptures along that line and then we can comment on them. Daniel chapter 7, beginning at verse 9, the scripture says, I watched till thrones were put in place, speaking of the thrones of the saints, and the Ancient of Days were seated, speaking about God the Father, because when the, the, the resurrection of the unbelievers takes place, this is when God the Father will, His throne will appear um, because you know, scripture, we, we won't read it here, but heaven and earth flee away. And there's no more earth and there's no more heaven. It's just a, um, a plane for whatever, for want of a better description. But you have this huge um, mass of humanity and angelic beings who will be before the throne of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and obviously the thrones of the saints. The, the, the vast population that will be there is beyond any kind of imagination that any any human being can come up with because it'll be well over 100 billion people that will stand there to be judged. That's excluding all of the angels that fell under Satan's realm. They will also be standing there to be judged. The ones who will also be there are all the saints judging these people. And the ones who will also be there are all of God's angels who would be uh, in that. So th this will be such a, 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 this will be an absolute huge event in the eternal calendar. Um, never again will there be so many people in one place at one time as at this day of judgment. Anyway, Daniel chapter 7 verse 9, I watched till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days were seated. His garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels of burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. 
10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. And so this is a picture of what the, the kind of the, it will look like on that day of judgment. It talks about a thousand thousands ministered to him. I have no idea how many a thousand thousands are because the, the second thousands doesn't tell us how many thousands are in there. And then 10,000 times 10,000, well, that's a billion, but there's a lot more. And it'll be there. I've already mentioned about the fact that just the unbelievers alone will be over a, a hundred billion of them standing there waiting for their judgment. And their judgment will be pronounced upon them by the saints. For the scripture talks about this honor is given to his saints to judge the unbelievers. And uh, a scripture we can look at which will just support that is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning at verse 2. The Apostle Paul writing, he says, Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? And so the judgment, when the books are open, the saints will be sitting behind those books. And every one of those who are un unbelievers will be standing before the saints to be judged. All of them would have already been condemned. Remember our Lord Jesus referred to this resurrection as the resurrection of condemnation. They have already been condemned because they have not believed in Jesus Christ as Lord. And so their condemnation is, is, is pronounced. What is taking place now is their judgment to determine the degree of punishment they will incur for the rest of eternity. And that is what the, the saints will be judging. The books will be opened in front of the saints. The saints will then be, based on what they, they see recorded in the books, the saints will then pronounce upon the unbelievers in front of them, this is your eternal punishment that you will incur. And that is your internal punishment that you will incur based on what is recorded in the books. And so the judgment will be righteous. The judgment will be just because it will be based on what God has recorded. And God's recorded everything. And so it's going to be a very um, traumatic time for the unbelievers because they know that their destination is the lake of fire and brimstone. They've already seen Satan being cast in there. Um, and they know that that is where they are headed. But they are now finding out from the saints just to what level they will be cast into that lake of fire and brimstone. It is at this point, remember our Lord Jesus in the book of Revelation said to the, one of the churches, I'll make them come and worship before your feet. That's exactly what will happen at this time. And all of those unbelievers will come and worship before the feet of the saints because they know that they have been chosen by God to be their judges. Another scripture we can look at to give us an account of this event is in Revelation chapter 20, beginning at verse 11. The scripture says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, speaking of God the Father, from whose face heaven and earth fled away. And so the heaven will be gone by this time, the earth will be gone by this time. This will be a judgment that will take place in a, a location that God creates, um, and everybody will be standing before his throne. And there was found no place for them, talking about heaven and earth. Verse 12, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. Verse 13, The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And so this is, um, even at this time, death and Hades are cast into the lake of fire. Death and Hades will obviously have not been um, bound at, during the time that our Lord uh, uh, is on the earth. Well, death will be, but not Hades. Um, because a lot of unbelievers still have to die during that period of time. These are the last two. Remember the scripture talks about in the book of Rip, um, in, the, in the epistles, that death is the last enemy to be destroyed. And death and Hades will then be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And all the unbelievers will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, but they will first be judged according to what was written in, in the books, according to their works. And so nobody gets away with anything. 
every single detail has been recorded. You know, we see things going on in the world and we see um, injustices taking place and we see people uh, who are un ungodly seem to be prospering and get away with everything in this life. No one gets away with anything. Everything gets recorded and everybody will pay an eternal price for that which they have done in this life. And that price will be, it, it, it's not a good price to pay for all eternity if you are destined for the second death, which is the lake of fire and brimstone. It is at this time that the, the, first, the second resurrection takes place. For death and Hades give up the dead that are in them. And so the dead in, who are currently in, in Hades are raised from the dead to this uh, location where God the Father will be seated on His throne alongside Christ Jesus our Lord on His throne, the saints before them and the saints with the books in front of them and the saints on their thrones judging those who have been raised from the dead, the unbelievers. This is the second resurrection. Their resurrection is a resurrection of condemnation. They will be raised out of hell to stand before the saints to receive their eternal judgment and then they will be cast into the lake of fire brimstone for all eternity. Um, and if you look at the accounts of what the new heaven and the new earth will be like, this lake of fire and brimstone will be located just outside of the new Jerusalem. Uh, the smoke of their torment of that, that furnace that they dwell in will, be, will rise up forever and ever. And all of us, the saints, will see that all the time. And the scripture talks about that when, this, when people come up to Jerusalem to worship at the feasts, they will go out to that lake of fire and brimstone and look upon those who are being tormented for all eternity for being rebellious against God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is something that will never be taken away from the saints. We will always see it, it will always be there. Uh, we, will, we will see the unbelievers um, suffering for all eternity for that which they've done in this life. And so that is the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. Once that has happened, there will be no more death. For death himself, for he is an angel, and his name is death, he will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Death will have been done away. He's the last enemy that will be destroyed. And so there will be no more death, and because there's no more death, there will never be another resurrection of the dead. And so those are the two resurrections. The first resurrection takes place with the saints, and the second resurrection takes place with all the unbelievers at the end of the age. And then we move into the new age. One of the new ages because the scripture talks about ages to come. God the Father has, there have been ages that have gone past uh, in, uh, before mankind ever came on the earth. Think about the dinosaurs. Think about all of the, um, those creatures that used to exist. They, would, they, they came from different ages. And there are going to be multiple ages going forward. But at, the, at this time, when this judgment takes place, God our Father will then create new heavens and a new earth. And the saints will then enter into that age with God the Father and Jesus Christ and dwell with them for all eternity. But never again will there be another resurrection of the dead, for death himself would have then been destroyed. And so no one will ever die again. And thus never another resurrection of the dead will ever be required. And we're going to end the series on the resurrection of the, of the dead on that particular point today. Amen.